Hey guys, welcome back. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at a very simple plugin called Redux. Redux? Redux? I don't, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Um, and what Redux does is, no, it's probably Redux actually. Reduction, yeah. What Redux does is you've got a combination of bit reduction and downsampling. So when I'm using hi-hats or drum samples, I often turn towards um, saturator. You know, you might use saturator here or another kind of distortion. Um, but more recently, um, I've been t tending to go towards Redux as an alternative to a distortion plugin. So what I've done here, let me just make sure this channel's muted. I've just set up a very simple drum loop using Kick2 and a couple of loops from Ultimate Drums 2. Uh, let's have a quick listen to that. I've just got some compression on there. And if we just have a quick look at the Redux GUI, there's 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 two controls, it's very simple. Let's just switch it on. You've got bit reduction, so you can start at 16 bit and go all the way down to one bit. And then the down sampling has got two modes. You've got soft or hard mode. Hard is a it's a far more extreme uh, version of down sampling, uh, but I tend to use the soft mode. And all I've done is I've reduced the bit rate to 12 bits. So this this is kind of the emulator, and I think the Roland W30 used to run in in 12 bit as well. So you're getting a kind of crunchy, gritty character to your samples. And then the other popular one, I suppose, would be taking it down to 8 bit, which is your old kind of Mega Drive and I think Commodore 64, that kind of thing, used to run at 8 bit. I'm not talking about the actual computing power. I'm talking about the the audio rates. <clears throat> so I've set this one to 12 bit. I've downsampled it very slightly. We're only talking about a tiny, tiny amount in soft mode. I'll try and get it back to where it was. And just have a listen to this drum loop as I switch Redux on and off. It's quite subtle, but listen particularly to the hi-hats because the hi-hats go from quite clear and high definition and it, it it makes them a bit crunchier because I find that a lot of um, hi-hat samples, when you start layering them up, you start to get a lot of harsh top end, but using distortion can help alleviate that. So just have a listen to this as I switch it on and off. So obviously this is off. It just It's very subtle, but listen to the hi-hats as I switch on and off, they, they get nice and crunchy. Harsh. nice and crunchy so you can um, let me just mute the kick so you can hear the hi-hats alone y you can play around with the bit reduction and the down sampling but I find that bit rate reduction and kind of um, bit crushing it can get really ugly really quickly so let's have a play and just listen to how bad it can get I mean you might like that but not me Now that kind of um, down sampling sweep, I use it quite a lot when I'm doing synthesizer presets. If there's a bit crusher in the synthesizer itself, I use that quite a lot. So it makes sense that I would use it in a in a project in other kind of audio sources as well. But in this case, I like it quite subtle on the drums. So let's go back to where we were roughly. 12. Off again. The funny thing is, quite often when I use kind of distortion type effects on hi-hats, when you first switch it on, you think, oh, actually, no, that's making the sound worse because I'm losing this super high-end content. And you you believe you're destroying the sound. But some quite often, when you turn the distortion off again and hear what the hi-hats were like, you think, actually, they're quite harsh to start with. And this is what I think it sounds like here. So let's switch it on and then switch it off again. I mean, they're clearer, but they're a little bit more annoying in the top end, I believe, anyway. So what we will do now is I'm just gonna add a sweep. Actually, I've got this in um, arrangement view. So let's listen to the sweep I've added as well. And let's turn, make sure Redux is off. Right, here we go. So 
So all I've got there is a sweep sample and I've put some reverb on it and LFO tools to create that little kind of pumping effect. And I've taken out some bottom end. But what we're gonna do with Redux is I'm actually gonna use the downsampling function to create an automated sweep. So let's switch it on. So I'm gonna do that kind of thing. One thing that I wish it had actually was a wet dry knob. I know you could do it in the audio effects rack by creating two separate audio streams, but I just wish there was a dry wet knob on the on the plugin itself. But there isn't, so we'll carry on as we were. So I'm gonna use this down sampling function in soft mode because let's just have a listen to it actually in hard mode. Can you, you can hear just how drastic it can be. And it ends up being quite useless on most audio sources, I would imagine. So on this channel, I'm gonna activate automation and make sure I've got that dial activated. And let's just do a simple sweep with the automation. Let's do something like that. And just hear how it sounds. So the point here is that you can use this downsampling function to create a an added layer, an added level of interest to your effects samples. I mean, you don't only have to use it on effects, obviously, but I tend to like it on these effects samples. Let's have a listen to it in the context of the mix with everything else. And let's switch Redux off. And there you go. Very simple plugin, but there's lots of potential uses for it. I hope you found this video useful, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Thanks, everybody, for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate it all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.